Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 20, where if you follow these instructions you'll hopefully finish in the top 5% globally in FPL, which means you should do alright in your mini leagues. Now this is the last game week where you can use your first wild card if you still have it. And it's been made slightly more complicated because it looks like Haaland is almost certainly not back. And after this game week we're going to lose Salah. So if you use your wild card, I'd suggest you probably should get Salah and you probably should get Sun and probably don't get Haaland. And then next week or maybe the game week after that, you're going to have to make transfers anyway. But you really want to try and get the points. And given that Salah and Sun could both get good points this week, it's probably worth having them in. But it's up to you. I'm just going to make suggestions. All right, let's have a look. So at the time of recording, the last game hasn't even started yet. So I'm going to run through and show the scores as they stand at the moment. So there's going to be lots of blanks, but this is what happened in game week 19. The goalkeepers, they've not done very well, the ones that have played so far. Turner got three and that's it. For the expensive defenders, Trent got eight and that's all. But as you can see, there's four on the page that are playing tonight. The cheaper midfielders, nothing. And the cheapest midfielders, Senesi, still doing good so that's nice but the rest were nothing of the midfielders nothing but most of those on the page is still playing yet uh the mid price Foden did all right the rest nothing and for the cheapest midfielders he chanted very well Gibbs White I like and the rest didn't play for the strikers the expensive strikers Darwin Solanke eight and six the cheaper strikers, Alvred Visser and Morris all got seven, Archer five, so that was nice. It was actually a very low scoring week up to now, but I don't know what the last two game scores are going to be. But at the time of watching this, you probably do know the scores, so that's exciting. You're in the future from where I am. So looking at the players in the system for game week 20. Edison, good chance of clean sheets on paper, but Man City often do let in goals. Quite expensive, 5.5. He'll be the bookies' favourites to keep clean sheets over the next few games. I wouldn't be buying him, but he's perfectly good. Raya's a good keeper. The only real downside of Raya is you can only have two other Arsenal players in your other 10, which is fine. You just might want three. Onana, I think Man United may have started turning the corner. It's completely feasible. They keep three clean sheets in the next four. It's also very feasible. They don't keep any. Uh, but he's a lot of fun and if you're a Man United supporter and you want a token Man United player you might want him. It's really hard to pick keepers or at least I'm finding it really difficult to see where the clean sheets are coming. So kind of the goalkeeper is a bit of a disposable spot at the moment. Leno, fixtures aren't great the next two. Sanchez injured, you can sell him if you want to. Flecken, uh, Brentford have been a bit disappointing I think this season. Johnston's injured, sell him if you want. Definitely have at least one keeper. I know I was saying keepers are difficult to predict clean sheets, but you want at least one keeper that's going to be playing. Pickford, I do like. He could have some clean sheets coming up. Regarding the cheaper keepers, Dubravka's got three difficult fixtures coming up. Ariola, assuming he is first choice, it looks like maybe he probably is at the moment at 4.2. Given we don't know where the clean sheets are coming from, maybe he's as good as anyone. And Turner... It looks like he might still be first choice at Forest, but again, you wouldn't expect many clean sheets there. Regarding defenders, Trent is still a good player, absolutely worth buying if you can possibly fit him in. And given that Haaland's almost certainly injured at the weekend, maybe even the following game week, a lot of us should be able to afford to get Trent in. Trippier, you can sell him if you want to. The next three fixtures, Newcastle are unlikely to get a clean sheet. Trippier may get an attacking return, he may not. He may end up on our benches anyway. I have Trippy up. I'm almost certainly not going to sell him because I am going to want him back in three, four game weeks time in any case. He's just going to probably sit on my bench. Poro is still a good buy. Saliba is still a good buy. White, if you can afford White or Saliba, you might as well buy Saliba. Gabriel still a good buy and he's 0 0.6 cheaper than Saliba and White. Regarding the slightly cheaper defenders, Kanji is completely sellable. If we knew he was playing, he'd be worth keeping because he could get a couple of clean sheets next few games. But we really don't know the minutes. I might, after the Burnley game, just kick him out of the system because Man City players are so hard to pick. At least the defenders are. 
Your doggy's all right. I'd say he's all right. Colwell, because he's quite cheap and Chelsea have got some nice fixtures, he's all right. Cash is sellable, doesn't get 45 minutes enough. Concert's all right. Pinnock's okay, a little bit dodgy. I might be moving him to Orange in a couple of weeks' time because Brentford just aren't quite doing it. But they are away to Palace and home to Forest. Maybe they can keep a couple of clean sheets then. I wouldn't be buying Pinnock. If you're wild carding, I suggest you concentrate on the green players and the yellow players and don't get any of the orange players. The cheapest defenders, Senesi, he's good for... Um, I should have made him grey probably. He's quite cheap, 4.5. And I think the last four game weeks, he's got an attacking return or a clean sheet. So he's been pretty good. But with Tottenham and Liverpool, West Ham in the next three, there's a good chance he's only going to get zero or one points in those. Lascelles, I don't think he played this last game week. Uh, he's probably not going to get much game time. The only reason to keep him is because he's cheap and he frees up money and you've probably got better things to do than move him on. Definitely not worth buying him. Maguire's not worth buying, but again, he's cheap. He's not going to be playing for a while, probably because he's injured. But um, if you've got better things to do, that's fine. If you've got the space, you want to replace him, that's fine as well. But don't go buying Maguire. Same with Kabore. Don't bother buying Kabore, but he is cheap. So Salah and Son are both off after this game week, but they both have nice fixtures this game week. So... Absolutely worth keeping, but next game week, if you want to free up some cash or a position, it's fine to sell one or both of them, but you don't have to. But for this game week, it's worth having. If I was wildcarding this game week, I would probably buy both and then just intend to maybe even take a hit next week to deal with the situation then. Saka is worth buying, as is Odegaard. Arsenal have some nice fixtures coming up. Fernandez. May be good in a few game weeks. They do have some nice fixtures. I can't make him orange just because I think he's too good. But equally, he's not green either. Bowen is a green player. He's very good. He's just consistently getting points. Martinelli's not being as good as last year. If you want an Arsenal midfielder, Saka and Odegaard are definitely better at the moment. Regarding the cheaper midfielders, Foden is definitely a good player. Worth buying at the moment. Sterling... Chelsea aren't quite aren't quite playing as good as they could do given the players they got. Maybe they will do soon. Sterling's a perfectly good player, but I'm not making him green. Richarlison is green. Now, with Sun going next game week, it'd be interesting to see if Tottenham are worse at attacking or if they still manage to fill the gaps and they're just as good. But at the moment, I think Richarlison's still worth having for sure. Diaby's worth getting rid of if you got him. Matoma, we're kicking out the system. He's injured, possibly back for February. Gordon, so he's not green. Uh, Newcastle players do seem quite tired. Next few games, away to Liverpool, home to Man City, away to Villa. The only thing to say about that for Gordon is he's an Evertonian and he's playing at Anfield this coming game week. Is that going to increase the chance of him getting a yellow card? Perhaps. On the other hand, he would love to score. Maybe he will score and then take his shirt off and get a yellow card for that. I'm sure he'd love to score at Anfield though. So I wouldn't be bringing him in if I was on a wild card now if I had a free transfer. But maybe in three, four game weeks time, I would bring him, bring him in. Ward Prowse, completely sellable. The cheapest midfielders, He Chan is injured and he's off to the Asian Cup, except he might be injured and so he doesn't go off. He may be okay for the Everton game, but we don't know. Gibbs White, bench fodder 5.7. Palmer is bench fodder, but he's very, very good bench fodder. Absolutely worth getting at the moment if you're wildcarding or you just want to do a transfer. A nice cheap player. Frees up cash. And very, very good. Neto, still not quite back. Surely he's going to be back soon. So if you're wildcarding, don't get Neto. But if you've got him at the moment, if you've got other things to deal with, deal with them. If you sell Neto, you might find he's suddenly back and he's doing very, very well again. Once he's back and fit, if he's like he was at the beginning of the season, more than half the teams are probably going to bring him in. Then Garnacho, a new player for Man United. Now, I know he scored two goals. It's not just a knee-jerk reaction because he is, he is also cheap. 4.7 million, you can afford him to be sitting on your bench. But he is away to Forest. Two weeks' time, he's away to Wolves, home to West Ham. He could be getting something. 
you could choose five midfielders better than him, but for a cheap midfielder, he is probably pretty good. Nakam, but we're kicking him out of the system. He's just not playing. And then regarding the forward, so Haaland, I could have made him orange, but he might be back the next game week. In which case, do you really want to spend a transfer to get rid of him and bring him back in? So if you want to sell him to free up funds, you can, but then who are you going to buy? Because it's probably not worth selling Haaland to get Salah if it's going to cost you a hit because you're only going to have to reverse it next game week anyway when Salah's gone. So you don't have to sell him if you still got him. You could if you want to. If I had Haaland, I probably wouldn't be selling him now. Watkins is green. He's still a good player, even though he's not uh, returned much in the last few game weeks. He's still pretty good. And he's home to Burnley, away to Everton, home to Newcastle, who are currently leaking goals, away to Sheffield United. He could do well in the next four game weeks. Jesus, I'm saying, is still a good player to have. Darwin is okay. I wouldn't be buying him, but you don't have to sell him if you got him. Nkunku, very low owned at the moment. He is clearly a very, very good player. How long it's going to take him to get enough minutes to get a good score, we don't know. And as I've said before, Chelsea are very good at making strikers that are good, not so good. But maybe he's going to buck the trend of recent years and maybe he's going to be a good player. I've got him in my team. I'll certainly be keeping him for the next few game weeks. Solanke's still a good player, 7 million. And the cheaper forwards, Alvarez, given that Haaland's out, he's a very good player. All the time Haaland and or De Bruyne are out, he is a good player. And we don't know when those two are back. This, uh, this is his last game week before he's off to the African Cup. But away to Palace, if you've got him, you might want to play him. If you want to sell him, that's fine as well. Yao Pedro, you can sell him as well. It's easy to get three strikers that are worth having quite cheap you can fit in your squad so you definitely don't want to be buying Visser or Jao Pedro at the moment Morris he's in there because he's cheap he's bench fodder Adibayo is bench fodder Archer is bench fodder but I think Archer has actually returned had got attacking returns the last two game weeks so that's nice so regarding the bench and the captaincy I'm going to make suggestions and then you do whatever you like so the for the goalkeepers the first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting, is the keeper that goes on your bench, which means your other keeper is the one you're playing. So Johnston injured, Sanchez injured. If you've got them, of course, they're going to be on your bench. Leno's playing Arsenal, probably not going to keep a clean sheet. Ariola's playing Brighton. Brighton all but once this season have scored. Dubravka away to Liverpool. Probably going to concede, almost certainly, but Onana did manage to keep them out. Maybe Newcastle do something special. Onana away to Forest and then Turner at home to Man United. All the goalkeepers on the screen at the moment I'd expect to not keep clean sheets. They're going to concede. I have Turner higher than Onana because I do think being at home does make a big difference. Flecken away to Palace. I think he's not going to keep a clean sheet. Pickford away to Wolves. First chance of a clean sheet there. He Chan may be out injured. Probably won't keep a clean sheet, but he's the most likely so far. And then Raya away to Fulham. And then Edison at home to Sheffield United. So that's the order of the keepers. For the outfield players, my suggested order is as follows. The first player you see that you've got, I suggest is position three in your bench. The next player position two. The last player position one. If you want to mix it up, that's absolutely fine. This is just a suggestion. I'm not showing all the players in the system. The best ten-ish I'm keeping out because if you've got them, you're playing them. You've got Salah, you've got Saka, you've got Sun. You're playing them. I'm not showing them on this page. So Maguire, almost certainly injured. He's not playing. Lascelles, Nakamba, Adebayo, Archer, Cash, Kabore, Morris, Pinnock, Vissa, Jao Pedro, Ward-Prowse, Gibbs-White, Diaby, Consa. And we're going to get to the slightly better players now. Senesi, He Chan, who may be injured, Martinelli, Akanji, Colwill, Udogi, Trippier, Gordon, Garnacho. Now, hopefully, you've already got three players now, but just in case you haven't, we have Fernandez, Ben White, Gabriel, Saliba. And as always, if you've got two Arsenal defenders, you may want to put one further down the list. So, for example, if I had Saliba and Gabriel and Trippier, I would play Saliba and or Gabriel, and then Trippier. And then have the other Arsenal defender probably on the bench. 
But I definitely wouldn't be playing two Arsenal defenders and benching Trippier. And Kunku, Darwin, Solanke, Jesus and Odegaard. And then if you don't see the player, it's because you're playing them. Regarding the captaincy, there's a lot of players that may be very good captains this week. So suggestions are Salah. He's going to wear the old mule hat for me, I think, almost certainly. Home to Newcastle. Sun also has a nice fixture, as does Foden. Very nice fixture. As does Watkins and Saka and Bowen. Any of these could be a fine captain. If you can have captaincy for one of these and vice captain for one of these, I think that's a good choice. If you can't do that or you don't want to, I'd suggest just choose one of the green players that we saw on the previous pages. And in case you're wondering about the background image, it's quite simply Haaland's kind of broken down a bit and he needs repairing. We don't know if he's going to be back game week 20, but unlikely. Possibly game week 21, maybe game week 22. We just don't know. There we have it. Suggestions for game week 20. I think I've got one more video to make and then I've maybe got a week off. <laughs> I've had to put out quite a few videos the last couple of weeks and fit Christmas in somehow. Not quite sure how all that worked. But I hope you have a very good game week 20. Thank you very much for watching and I guess I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.